Um, let's talk about Guy Pierce, ladies and gentlemen. Guy Pierce from Memento. He got into very big trouble the other day because he apparently doesn't know anything about the internet or the way culture <laughs> is going these days. He had the temerity to ask the question, you know, if only trans people can play trans characters, then can trans people only play trans characters? And then he found out swiftly, yeah. you are not allowed to ask questions, my friend. You just do what they say and you move on because okay. you are going to get into very deep trouble on the internet for daring to ask such a such a brave and stunning question to the a public. Stunning and brave. Question. Stunning and brave. Thoughts? So if, if the only people allowed to play trans characters are trans folk, then are we also suggesting the only people trans folk can play are trans characters? Surely that will limit your career as an actor. Isn't the point of an actor to be able to play anyone outside your own world? Duh. I mean, the follow up question is have you played a woman, Guy Pierce? They do in the theater all the time. Yeah. In, in well, theater, they used they, to, they, but they... that's not the way Hollywood works anymore. In Hollywood, absolutely it, not. It is hilarious how like uh, they pick and choose what you're allowed to uh, change and what you're not allowed to change. Meaning that like you can play, uh, you can race swap a character, you can gender swap a character, but you yourself cannot do that. The Ellen Page can now play, uh, who is now Elliot Page, can play men or women now, depending on what day of the week it is. Well, but, they changed, but Scarlett Elliot Johansson Page's can't character t into a trans yeah. character, which deviated from. In, uh, in what? In The Last of Us? In, from Umbrella Academy. Oh, gotcha. It was Gerard Way's uh, comic book gotcha. series. And they changed the character that Elliot Page was playing after... Uh, after transition? The transition. And uh, that was just like what they were expected to do. My, my favorite part of this whole story is like there has never been a group in history more protected or able to cause more fear. You have to see the length of the message that he wrote. He, it's yeah. like a full pair. It's like a full page uh, that he wrote uh, in his it's apology insane. for it. Yeah. I, I, Restitution I, I, paper. Like, like that, that is that school. is. He he made that tweet. What Mary read to you basically, and this was the response he had to go be, uh, give you. Like I'm not reading all that. The but crap. But out congratulations, of or sorry that happened. <laughs> yeah, like you're not allowed to ask questions. You're not allowed to push back in any way, shape, or form. They will cry out in pain as they punch you in the face. Mm -hmm. You're not allowed to deviate from the narrative at all. And the narrative is that they can play whatever role they want but they also are the only ones who can play their uh, roles that involve their gender identity because to them, an actor can only play something within their lived experience, which makes no sense because the whole point of an actor between yeah. research, practice in the craft is that you're supposed to be able to convincingly convey something outside of your lived experience. Mm -hmm. You might not be able to see it looking at me, but I actually was a theater kid growing up. Um, I did... I was I started acting classes and camps and all that when I was in fourth grade. I did it up through about 10th grade. And then I switched over to music because theater people were telling me I wasn't a real theater person because I was working at a local regional theater instead of doing the school one. Gatekeepers. Exactly. Yeah. Theater gatekeepers. And I uh, and I I think that was kind of the beauty and the joy of it for a lot of us was, you know, especially as kids. But even as adults, the, the whole point of acting is that you're going and you're putting on a performance. You are being somebody aside from yourself. Yeah. So, you know, when I remember it was uh, People's Light and Theater in Malvern, Pennsylvania is where I did all of my stuff. And every year around the holidays, they do something called a panto. Okay. And in the panto, one of the main jokes was that there was a, a character that was the dame. This was like structural to the panto. It was a character that was the dame. It was always the same actor. It was a man dressed in women's clothes with yeah. like huge fake boobs and like the whole thing Luke would love it. was you it was just making fun of like you know th th this this character it was both making fun of women and making fun of the man it was supposed to be comedic and everybody loved it everybody laughed because the whole show was ridiculous yeah. the entire idea of a panto is that you go over the top um and I think with acting today, especially, we're starting to see this weird thing where for like, you know, five years ago it was uh, straight actors can't play gay characters. Yeah. Well, no, I think straight actors can play gay characters and gay actors can play straight characters because if if you're a straight man who can play a gay man or you're a, uh, a lesbian woman who can play a straight woman, 
and you can do it convincingly, that's impressive. Yep. You're just a good actor. Matt Bomer is a good example of yeah. that. Too. Uh, he Neil Patrick was, Harris. Neil Patrick Harris, uh, all good examples of gay men who were able to, and, and those are characters that weren't just straight men, but were considered heartthrobs mm -hmm. to women who wooed women consistently yeah. in various roles they played. And it's weird because I think part of it is also because Hollywood for a long time, if you pay attention to, to the casting departments, they always, uh, people think it's a new thing these days that they try to incorporate like they'll give the character the same hometown backstory as the actor because they feel like it adds to authenticity but they've actually been doing that for decades in Hollywood they try to actually mold aspects of characters to be more in line with the actor themselves and I don't think that actually helps in in any way I think it seems like more of a yeah. an artist an artist's version of a virtue signal uh, that they're able to now exploit because of how heavily Hollywood has gotten engaged in identity politics. I, I also I do think it was a perfectly fair question for for him to ask. Exactly. You know? It was so reason. That's what's it, funny about it. It was so reasonable. I will say, I think had he asked it a week earlier, <laughs> it would have received significantly different responses. True. It probably would have been you know he might have still gotten some flack, but I think there would have been more of a discussion. Probably would have been more reason oh, and I all that. Of course, Twitter, so probably not. But... I don't think on Twitter there's any chance of a reasonable yeah, discussion. True. I think this would be the reaction no matter where, yeah. when it was posted. But I, I do think that the fact that he, he posted this, what, three days after a... a um, that definitely has something to do with A trans person <laughs> committed a mass shooting. Like, and, 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 you know, as and, we know, they're under attack. Yeah, and, and well, I will, I will also be very open about the fact that, like, the response I've seen from some conservatives about this shooting, how suddenly, suddenly a lot of people who two weeks ago were, there should be no restrictions on what yeah. guns you should own, are like, trans people shouldn't have guns. No, screw that. Trans people should have guns. Yeah. Gay people should have guns. Black people should have guns. White people should have guns. We should all have guns. I agree. Guns are fantastic. I was, uh, I said, <laughs> I said that if you're less. mentally stable. Yeah. Yeah, who's, Even who, then who, though, because like I, I have anxiety and depression, I'm not going to yeah. shoot myself. That doesn't count. Like, I'm, I'm saying people who like scare the shit out of the people around them and constantly like, make. I think if you're making that threats, statement? that's one thing. Who that's literally that like every one of these examples. It, I mean, that's and also recognizing like I, we we're getting off topic, yeah. but like recognizing the yeah. the role that the FBI plays in these situations. Oh, um, yeah. <laughs> well, I have but, no illusions about. No, like, that, that definitely stuff. had <laughs> something to do with the reaction to his tweet for sure. But he would have been eviscerated regardless. My main thing is like I I'm just tired of I, I just don't think we need this the this many stories told about gay and trans people. It's like what one percent or a uh, di like <laughs> depends what generation you're talking of to percent of of all of our population and they're being inserted into at least like a quarter of. Hollywood, but it's in not Hollywood actually now. Hollywood identifies overwhelmingly 22% identifies LGBTQIA. Yeah. So based on their population, the, the population of LGBTQ stories being told, it's actually pretty similar to what the actual number of people in Hollywood who identify that way are. My mm -hmm. problem is when they start uh, superimposing that onto the rest of the nation and think that Hollywood represents yeah. the rest of us. Well, the, the other thing too is that it's not just like, it's, it's, it's backfiring. Is, is the problem, you know, I have, I have gay friends, I have trans friends, I love all of these people very much in my life, but what I'm seeing is the rush to make every single TV show and movie about a gay person, a trans person, someone who's marginalized, something else like that, people are getting tired of it. People, are, people feel like they're being lectured, not like they're going to see a, a movie or a TV show or something. Um, one, one great example, I wanna put it this way, I've, there have been a lot of movies that come out recently that are, that are pushing a, a progressive agenda. But then uh, Top Gun came out. Yep. There is no politics in Top Gun. It is a movie about the military that is entirely apolitical. It does not tell you who the enemy is. It, you know, there's, there's a couple of female fighter pilots. There's a couple of black fighter pilots. Nobody talks about it. Nobody thinks about it. They're just a bunch of badass pilots going to blow stuff up. I actually pointed that out about the X-Files, why they would mm -hmm. never be able to do the X-Files now, because it was a show about two FBI agents that promoted a bipartisan promotion of distrust in the government. Yep. Like they, mm -hmm. they, it didn't, it didn't take sides one way or the other. It's just they're in power. Therefore they are corrupt because it's the government. Yeah, and exactly. But what, what I wanted to finish the thought with was though, is I, uh, have you guys seen the movie, uh, uh, devotion? I didn't know that's with Jonathan majors. With Jonathan see, majors. We went to see that when it came out in the theaters, it was my, my co-host Aiden, my, one of my best friends, he NYU film, you know, similar political opinions to me, not, not quite as extreme, but, um, similar. But we walked out of that theater. It is a story about fighter pilots, but most importantly, it's a story about racism. Yep. 
And the thing is, at no point did I feel lectured. Yeah. I did not feel like I was being told I'm a bad person. I, it was just, hey, here's this story of something that really happened. Yeah. And it was a true story of both racism, overcoming racism, and friendship and sacrifice. The problem is there, it was aren't, fantastic. there aren't enough good writers to make all yeah. those stories come out that way. Uh, unfortunately, you're only going to get a couple of ones that are going to be able to tell those stories with a deft hand that aren't going to overdo it and turn yeah. it into something like dinner theater. There is absolutely, and I, I think you're, you're hitting the nail on the head. The problem is not that these stories are being told. It's that the writers suck. Yeah. Well, but at least, at least when it comes to addressing something like racism, that mm -hmm. affects way more people than trans issues, yeah. just objectively. Yeah. Therefore, it resonates with a wider audience. But when you're prioritizing telling stories about you know, being trans mm -hmm. or being non-binary or even being gay, which is more common, yeah. you're still only addressing a very small sliver of the population. Mm -hmm. And then the, the, they're allies yeah. there's, <laughs> to them, there's good ways to do it and they're not doing it the good when ways it, when it doesn't resonate with that wider audience they'll complain that it's because we're discriminating against them and i think and i'm just tired of being the villain in, in their narrative of their like self-mythologizing of their lives you they're know? like they're vindictive but they also don't realize that they're in their own bubble as they far think as that they live in a movie that is yeah. their life and they are the main character and they feel that uh that what they represent is actually what middle america represents which is clearly not the same though i do believe that that's going to that the the, the gap between middle america beliefs and Hollywood and this stuff will shrink as social media grows and they're able to influence more and more kids. Yeah. Uh, I worry about that. I go back and forth with people about whether they believe the next generation will truly be more conservative. I, said, I don't think so. Not as long as oh. TikTok is around and social media is still around, all this stuff will. I can't think of Hollywood a time that around. I can't think of a time in history that a generation was more conservative than the last two. Yeah. Like we, we have, I don't, I can't think of a single time that we've gotten <laughs> more conservative over time. Um, you know, usually, usually progress goes a certain way i don't i don't think that progressive is necessarily a a you know a good i don't think it's it has to have a good connotation yeah. you know i think that there there's good progress and there's bad progress if you are walking through a swamp and you find a pile of quicksand and you walk into it that's progress yeah but it didn't go very well so like stuff like that you know it's i i, I think that it's we really are seeing a, a lot of a lot of stories that are is fumbling it they're not sure how to how to do it and <laughs> oddly enough one of the best uh ips for for showing diversity in my opinion in a positive light is star wars mm. um and i'm not talking about the sequel movies those yeah. were garbage and it's not <laughs> it's not because of the diversity stuff it's because they were garbage but if you watch clone wars if you watch mandalorian if you watch rebels any of these shows and in most of the movies you know they've got strong female characters they've got uh diversity i mean think about empire strikes back yeah. That came out, what, 1980? 70, 79, yeah, yeah. 80, something like that. Yeah. It's, it, they got huge backlash for having a black character, a mm -hmm. black, like, you know, important supporting character. And he did a great job. He was a great character. He was exciting. He was fun. He was cool. And it was well done. And you look back on it now and you watch Empire Strikes Back and you're not sitting there going, oh, God, they're shoving the diversity in my face, well, you know? In, in There's general, a good way to do it. Uh, I feel like people don't give Hollywood enough credit for just how diverse it always was. The difference was, uh, the story I always give is like, look, back in the day, what you'd have is uh, it would be two main white characters and then they would make uh, the characters that were of other ethnic backgrounds or minorities uh, the secondary characters, right? Now they're flipping it mm -hmm. and it's, uh, they're just, a lot of people would see that as a form of like, look, we're just, uh, we're just going the other way with it, yeah. right? Now the, the same amount of white characters exist, they're just not the focal point anymore. And most of the time, I actually don't have a problem with it. Like I said, if they don't focus yeah. on that being an issue. Uh, it's I done with to watch, acid being yeah. spent spewed at you yes. like not everything has to be about you white mayo monkey and yeah. it's just like, and like said, if you're like, trying to c create any goodwill with your audience and you want white people to go support your project in mm -hmm. part like that's just not how you go about it yeah, yeah. basic human interaction would teach you that
Yeah. They're just very socially maladjusted people. Like, it, this is just one of those things where it's going to, this is, I don't know if this ever goes away. Like, if you're, people are going to be scared into not, into complying and not having opinions on things because uh. of how fierce and fast I mean, maybe the backlash comes. Maybe if you're a comes. coward, it's pretty easy uh, also, to push back. Yeah. Thanks for watching. Listen to full episodes of Pop Culture Crisis on Spotify. Keep up with us on social media and make sure you subscribe and ring that bell so you never miss the show. Bye, guys.